people convert to Catholicism. But why? Well, for some, it's because of the liturgy and the beauty of it. While for others, it's because of the theology or they just cracked open a history book and saw the truth. Well, today I'm going to interview somebody that was once a lifelong Protestant and is now a veil-wearing, Latin rosary-praying, traditional Catholic. All right? Stay tuned. Hey guys, it's Joshua here, aka the Catholic Marine. Now today I have a very special guest with me today, and it is Trinity. Hi. Yes, it is the wife of the Catholic Marine. So <laughs> I'm glad to have you here, babe. Thank you. Yeah, glad to have you here. Glad to uh, you know be with you and and you know share this moment because you definitely have a very good story to tell. So I'm excited to you know get into it. All right. Uh, so first things first. Yes, please tell us, you know, where you're from, your upbringing, you know, how you grew up, and also your spiritual background too as well. Okay, so I'm originally from San Diego. Um, I, my upbringing was my, both of my parents were in Bible college. Uh, I was raised in a Protestant church. Um, you know, I was, everybody in my family was all Protestant. And uh, yeah, you know, played soccer. I have four brothers, one sister. Yeah, um, yeah, very family oriented. Okay, okay. So growing up as a you know as a kid, did you guys you know like were you like were you baptized and then you went you know went to church every Sunday? You know, growing up with your family, or did you guys you know, kind of bounce around or kind of you know what did you guys do like church wise? You know, on Sundays. I mean, yeah, we went to church on Sundays. It was you know sometimes we would bounce around. Sometimes my family would be like, well, you know. Uh, they, I just I wasn't feeling it at that church and they would go to a different church and so it was kind of like you know as long as it was the Protestant church we would go you know try to make it to one or another gotcha gotcha okay okay interesting beautiful sunny southern California right <laughs> yes. San Diego Born and raised. yeah how was that growing up in California oh it was you know it was fun my family was lived in the outskirts so it was um you know we we're a little bit more country. Um, just try to keep our distance from the main city. It was a little chaotic down there. So, yeah. Not too bad. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And then, so as far as like you know, growing up, you said obviously, uh, you know, you went to Protestant churches. I'm assuming, you know, non denominational or Methodist. Did you guys have a certain denomination of Protestantism or was it, you know, just like non denominational? Uh, it was just non denominational. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really recall going to another one, but you know, then again, I was always young and I didn't really know the difference. Um, so I mean, it could have happened, but I really don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so was your, like your parents, uh, your mom and dad, like were they involved in the church or were they kind of just, let just get in, you know, say our prayers, do what we got to do and get out and go back home. We, we obligated or, you know, went to church on Sunday. Yeah, kind of thing, I mean, right? it was kind of just a church on Sunday kind of situation. My, you know, my mom was a little bit more involved. Uh, maybe she was when I was younger, but when we got older, she was more involved. My mom, uh, my dad, not so much. Uh, my grandma, she was. She, you know, she became a deacon of the church, and yeah. So okay, you guys ever go to that church growing up, or? Uh, to my grandma's church? Yeah. No. Oh, I mean, we visited one time, but I mean, it wasn't something I went with her. It was, we we're kind of separate. Okay, nice. And then, so I know obviously being a Protestant, you know, there are some, you know, people that are a little bit anti-Catholic, uh, you know, towards, you know, you know, Catholics, Catholicism, you know, the different th you know, things that, you know, Catholics believe they don't really understand, you know, fully. So were you exposed at all to any anti Catholicism or like, what were your thoughts on Catholics before, you know, you started looking to it later on in life? Uh, I think my thoughts were just, uh, you know, they worship Mary. Um, you know, honestly, like my family never really talked about it because I really didn't ask about it. We were kind of just like, oh, well, we're born into this. So this is what we have to do. You know what I mean? So um, I just, uh, we always knew that we were just going to be a non-denomination, nothing else. And that was it. You know, no mm -hmm. questions have asked about it. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. And then growing up, you know, we got a little older and we just started dating, right? Uh, <laughs> did you like meet any Catholic guys growing up or anybody that was, you know, or I mean, I guess really of any, any faith, did you, you know, any uh, spiritual guys, religious guys? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew somebody that was Catholic, but it wasn't something <clears throat> that they were just open about. I just knew they were Catholic. Um, I mean, that's that's about it. <laughs> okay, uh, no, yeah. fair enough. So, obviously, we met right. We met in two thousand and sixteen. You mm -hmm. know, literally the day after Christmas. And uh, you know, I'm pretty open with my faith. You know, I uh, you know was you know later on. You know, it was more of a, a revert. I kind of came back to the faith and, you know, I was on fire. So when you first mm -hmm. met me, you know, I, I know I was pretty uh, on fire for the faith. Yeah. Out of that, you know, kind of make you feel, knowing that, hey, this guy's Catholic. He's into his faith. You know, uh, he must worship Mary. Like, did that ever creep into your mind? Or were you kind of like, oh, you know? Um, you know, it, uh, it, the only thing I would say is that I really... I wanted, you know, to be on the same page. And me, as a... As a Protestant, I was involved in my church. Um, you know, I was doing the children's ministries and, you know, I was really good friends with my pastor's wife and, you know, just knew everybody at my church. And um, and so knowing that you were Catholic and I was going to a different church in my head, I was like, oh, well, like, I want us to be together. Like, if me and you ever get married one day, I want us to be one. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was um, it was a little bit different for me and especially, you know, further down the road. But, um, yeah, it was um, it, I was you know, I didn't want to put my two cents into you. And I know you you we didn't want to get into it. Um, but, yeah, it was um, it was different. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. No, yeah. absolutely. You know, I've uh, obviously being Catholic. <laughs> I've, I've dated a, a girl, too, that wasn't Catholic. And they're kind of like either really, you know, they have questions or really interested or they're kind of like, whoa, put off and, you know, <laughs> not want anything to do just because, you know, I am Catholic. But yeah. Um, but yeah. So then uh, let me ask you this, as far as, um, you know, after, you know, we were, you know, we were together, we we're dating and we started getting serious. Was there any point as far as like, hey, I kind of want to research this and really think about it, you know, for myself, you know, versus kind of like, hey, I'll accept this, like you said earlier, you know, come together as a family and I'll just kind of be a part of it, you know, as far as just like, you know, maybe going to church with them, but actually become a Catholic. Like when did that start to, you know, creep into your mind or, you know, something, stuff like that? Yeah, it, um, it started creeping in when I was going to my church and then you were going to yours. And I would sit there and I would just be really sad, you know, because I wanted to be together. And, uh, you know, of all the thoughts and things that I had about Catholicism, you know, obviously I was very deep and rich in my faith and I just didn't want to, um, you know, I didn't want us to be separated. And uh, it took me picking up the catechism um, and trying to figure it out for myself. Like, what am I missing? Because, you know, I really want this to work. I knew you weren't going to break your spirit. So you were not going to change for anything. And me, I was like, you know, I'm always, um, you know, wanting to see, you know, I want to see the other side, you know, maybe there's something I'm missing. Maybe, you know, all this stuff that I've ever heard or people said, I've, you know, I've never actually you know, looked it up. And so, yeah, I bought the, the catechism, the Baltimore catechisms, like the first three editions. And I just started reading and reading and reading. And I was like, wow, you know, there's just, there was just a lot of like misconceptions that I, I didn't realize, like, I just kept hearing what people said instead of trying to figure it out. And it was, uh, I was like, wow, dang, like, um, maybe there's more to this than I really realized. Maybe there's more truth to this than I really realized. And yeah, I mean, that's, that, that was just that little, that little sparkle that just kind of just started growing and growing that little light. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. You know, the Baltimore Catechism, you know, that's something that, you know, I found later on in life and it's definitely, be, uh, or, you know, was helpful, you know, towards me, uh, you know, growing in my faith. So, uh, but I do want to take a break and I do want to go back a little bit because before, you, you know, got to the Baltimore Catechism, I know there was like a little time where, you know, you're strong in your faith and, and now strong in mind, we kind of butt heads a little bit. So talk about how was your, you know, your experience and your emotions that you felt about how, you know, we were together, we were even engaged at this time, um, or maybe even, you know, we got married, you know, I don't remember, but um, I know we were together, we were serious, you know, we, we were serious, but, you know, I don't want to budge, you didn't want to budge, because mm -hmm. um, there was a time before, you know, when we, you know, that wasn't, you know, the case as far as like, oh, okay, let me take a look. So kind of walk me through that you know, that time when 
before you got to the Baltimore Catechism and you're like, you know what, I can't do this? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, the time I know that, like, you know, like you said, I was really strong in my faith, um, you know, very involved in my church, very close with everybody. And uh, you were in, you know, your Catholic church, you're going to mass. And I was, uh, it started like to kind of get to me because I wanted you to come, you know, on my side and you wanted me to come on your side. And when I realized that you were not going to budge, like you, your feet were grounded, you were just not going anywhere. Um, at that point, I was like, is this going to work? Because, you know, being being in a relationship and being on the same faith level is like, it's, it's a very powerful thing. And to be separated can be very, you know, strenuous on a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so I, you know, I remember you trying to push me, push me, push me to become Catholic and you like <laughs> shove, trying to shove it down my throat. But, um, and there was a point in time where it was just a little too much for me. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, maybe, you know, maybe, Maybe this is just not going to work. But then, you know, I politely asked you, you know, just give me some time, you know, let me come to this on my own. Let mm. me read about it. Let me study about it. Let me figure it out. And then let me make a some decision off of that, because I don't want to, you know, just fight this until tooth and nail when I have no proof as if Catholicism is even like a thing, if it's even, if it's true, you know what I mean? So I, um, I wanted to do it on my own, and that's yes. what I did. Yeah, no, absolutely, yes, and I, I'm glad you did. I, I'm looking back. I'm glad I backed off because I know that I can be, you know, very passionate and I kind of be in your face. You know, when I like something, I, I want to tell you something. I'm just, you know, I, I go, you know, you know full <laughs> force. So I, I, I'm glad. I know I've already, you know, apologized many times, but I'm glad that I didn't step on God's toes or the Holy Spirit's toes. You know, I probably did. You know, you probably maybe would have, you know, read it a little sooner, but. Now, I definitely don't recommend to all those out there that if you are with somebody that is not Catholic and they are, you know, researching the faith, just take a deep breath, back away, and let God be God. Uh, because I almost uh, screwed it up because I was too, uh, too passionate about it. And, you know, so, but yes, so absolutely. So now, you know, walk me through now you're reading the Baltimore Catechism. I know during that transition, we moved to Seattle, you know, from San Diego. So kind of walk me now. Uh, to, you know, us being in Seattle, because I know I took you to mass one time, mm. you know, for the first time. So what was that like going to your first Catholic mass? It was different. <laughs> a lot of ups and downs and things I've never even heard of in my life. Uh, it was a lot of repetition that I, you know, I needed to get used to a lot of readings and it was just a lot of information. Uh, and were you at all, as far as, I know when I talked to a lot of Protestants that had been to Mass for the first time, first couple of times, they're really shocked about how, you know, biblical it is as far as like the Mass readings and how much is, you know, it's, you know, it's grounded in Scripture. A lot of times, you know, Catholics get the, uh, you know, reputation, uh, get the, sorry, get the reputation that we're not, you know, we don't read the Bible. You know, we do all these rituals and the rosaries and worship Mary and the Bible, what's that? So, were you like kind of surprised about, you know, some of the readings and how much scripture yeah. there was or? Yeah, definitely. It's, um, you know, I, I love that, you know, there was still a sermon because at first I was like, what is going on? There's, you know, all this other stuff, but I love the sermon. I love that I'll, there is so much prayer and scripture all throughout the entire mass. It was just, it was beautiful. It's like from the second it starts to the second it ends, like everything has some kind of symbolic meaning or some biblical meaning or some, something. It was just beautiful. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So yeah, and I remember we went to the, went to the mass uh, for the first time and then, you know, we started going more and more and then COVID happened. Mm. So now tell me about how, you know, um, cause I know, you know, back up a little bit, you know, you're starting to go to RCIA, mm -hmm. you know, just ask, Hey, I want to learn, you know, not necessarily I want to convert, but I just want to learn about, you know, yes. Catholicism and going to RCA. So now that COVID hit, t walk me through that time, you know, when COVID had hit. Yeah, I was going through RCA for like six months. And initially when I first went, I was just like, okay, I'm I'm here because I want to learn more. And this is this is probably going to be the best way to do it because I had already read the, cat on the Baltimore Catechisms and, 
you know, I was like, you know, let's take this a little bit a step further. I want to make sure I cover all ground before I make a decision. And, uh, you know, I was going there for, you know, about six months to uh, Norva Soto Matt or RCIA. And uh, after once COVID hit, it was uh, it took a, a, a very hard turn. You know, I, I watched all these all these churches close, Catholic churches included. And, um, you know, and, and I wanted to finish this RCIA. By then I was my, after six months, I was like, I was starting to really go out. Like I, I really am starting to believe in Catholicism. And um, when, like I said, when COVID hit, it got really hard, but there was one church that was still open and that was the traditional mass. And I, it was a really hard time for me to go into traditional mass. Cause first of all, like I was still, you know, still trying to get mm -hmm. used to the English version. Yeah. yeah. The traditional Latin mass, right? Yeah. Yes. The traditional Latin mass. I was still trying to get used to the, the English version that it was just kind of a little bit of a hard transition. And there was also something I was still kind of holding on to with my Protestant ways. And it was so it was so spiritual that the second I walked into that traditional mass, it like ate me up. The, what I was holding on to, it ate me up. And it was almost like fire being in that, in, in that mass. And it was, oh man, I was just, I felt so angry inside. I was like, why am I here? I'm still trying to get used to this. Like I would think of all the excuses why. And then during COVID, you know, I just, it like dawned on me, you know, it's this world could be coming to it. I mean, that's what we we're kind of thinking was going on. Like everybody's getting sick. Like it almost seemed like everything was just, just getting worse and worse. And I didn't want at any point God to come down from earth and take us or oh, something happened. Us die, us get sick or whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm still holding on to this Protestant way that is like a sin to Catholics. And it was just eating me up inside. And I knew, I was like, you know, I really got to get rid of this. Whatever this belief is, whatever my thoughts are about this, I need to get rid of this. And I made the decision to do so. And after that, we went into the traditional mass and it was just, I just fell in love. It was so different. I never wanted to go back. And that was very life changing. You know, that was yeah, the traditional Latin mass. Will, yes. uh, yeah, I would do that to you. Yes, it will. I can't, I can't, it was very, it was a very out of this world it's spiritual. Like God was really speaking to me, like, see how, how you feel now. You see, this is where you need to be. And ever since then, I just, all of my skepticism, all of my thoughts just kind of disappeared. And, and then I just started growing. Gotcha. So, you know, you had been to the uh, the new mass or the Nova Soda mass, uh, but it wasn't until you started attending the traditional lap mass where you just walk in and you just felt the beauty and it just, it just overcame you. Yes, it overcame me. It was just, I can't explain it. It was a reverence, the, the beauty, the Latin voices. Like it was, it was um, just, I can't explain it. It was just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a far cry from uh, going to a non-denominational church, huh? Oh, absolutely. You know, especially because, you know, I came from a church with, you know, their, their drums and their guitars and they're raising their hands and which, I mean, is not bad. I mean, praising the Lord is awesome. But what I, what I was experiencing is that when I go to a church and that pastor, whatever that, that church was not resonating a feeling inside of me, like I if that message didn't hit me or the every other message after that, then I'll, you know, I'm just going to go to a different church. And uh, I think you actually told me this, like we do not go to mass to get a feeling, you know, cause our feelings can be deceiving. We go to mass because it's for God. We are doing the Eucharist. We are receiving him. It is, it's, you know, we don't go off of how we feel. And it that really changed for me because like, I was like, that's true. Because when I'm Protestant, when I was Protestant, I would always be like, Oh, uh, God must not love me because I don't feel him. 
or you know that sermon wasn't good because i didn't feel the holy spirit there or i didn't i wasn't feeling the message it didn't change my mind mm -hmm. and that could be very deceiving yeah no absolutely yeah no absolutely let me ask you what about as far as you know now that you know you know you finished rsa and you became catholic and you're going to do the traditional latin mass what are some things that you know you as a catholic now catholic trinity has that you necessarily didn't have as a protestant because i know they say you know when you become catholic you don't lose anything but you gain so much Absolutely. you know a lot of people think that oh if i go from protestant to catholic or a non-catholic to a catholic i'm going to lose so much but as you know that's not the case i mean you gain so much you know by becoming catholic you didn't lose yeah. anything so what are some things that you know you you now possess as a catholic that you didn't have before well, one thing I can definitely say is uh, learning self-denial. Uh, that was not much of a thing for us Protestants. Um, we always did what was comfortable for us. And <clears throat> and being able to just to offer it up has been life-changing. You know, and there's going to be so many discus discomforts in this world. If I don't learn to offer it up and give my graces to God, like here, Lord, you know, whatever I'm suffering right now, I'll give it, I give it to you, you mm -hmm. know, or, or I give it to the souls in purgatory, you know what I mean? Or I give it to my family who's struggling. Um, that was never taught to us. So that's one big thing. Uh, another th big thing is uh, confession. So I was not aware of a lot of things I was doing, uh, a lot of mortal sins or venial sins, if that. Um, you know, I knew like the basics, do not kill, do not steal, do not lie. Um, but there is a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a lot of other things that I never saw, like, you know, dressing appropriately or, you know, modest in speech or using God's name in vain. That was, I, you know, I never, I know that's like a commandment, but it really stood out to me more because I am confessing it. So I am more aware of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So, and then to say how many times I've done it and, and you know, the, what kind of sin I'm doing, it, it just made me like, wow, like, wow. It just made me more, you know, wanting to change that part of me. Whereas before, you know, I kind of did it, got in my head, like, Lord, please forgive me. But now it's like I write it down on notes. If I do a mortal sin or a venial sin or anything, mm -hmm. I write it in my notes and I visually see it. It helps me to realize like, wow, like this is becoming a problem or this is, you know, this is something that stand out to me. And then obviously doing the, illum or not illumination of conscious, the examination of conscious. Examination of conscious. Yes, um, doing that too, <clears throat> that really, you know, stood out to me as well because it really broke down a lot. So being able to, uh, you know, know these things, I was able to better be a better Catholic, you know, so that, and now I get the rosary. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah, so was, was uh, Mary uh, an object for you coming to the church? I know. A lot of non-Catholics come into it. That's kind of a you know a roadblock for them. So explain the role of you know the beautiful Blessed Virgin Mary in your life um, coming into the Catholic Church. How was that for you? Yes, originally coming in. <clears throat> excuse me. Um, originally coming in, it was it was a little different, you know, because I've never prayed to anybody but God. Um, and then you know, just reading more and more about it. And seeing the breakdown of how, like, I will go to my mom and ask her to pray for me. I'll go to you and ask you to pray for me. Why not, you know, ask the Holy Mother, you know, the mother of Jesus Christ to pray for me to and ask for my intercession? You know, why, if she is more, you know, powerful than, you know, you and I. Mm -hmm. So that was, uh, it took a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of time for me to, do that but then i realized like yeah you know i that's it's it's pretty much how i'm asking other people to pray for me yeah. so yeah that was a beautiful change yeah oh absolutely yeah and so also i, I want to say that you know you've been so gracious in teaching our wonderful children not only the rosary but the rosary in latin you know i know we pray the rosary as a family in latin so even our children even though you know they're you know some of them you know under the age of 10 uh, they can pray the Rosary in Latin. And that was because of you. Yeah. I mean, you went from a 
you know, a hardcore, you know, Bible and thumbing Protestant to now you're teaching, you, you know, our children the rosary in Latin. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. No, I love them. I want them to understand. And, you know, I just love it. And, and it's not only that, like you playing the Gregorian chants and, you know, just Salve Regina's in the car or at home, like even our children at in like our three-year-olds singing the Salve Regina in church. And I think that's beautiful, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, thanks to us both. I'm, I'm very happy for us both to do yes. that for them. Yeah. The good old traditional Latin mass can't go wrong with it. So one last thing I do want to ask you, what advice would you give to anybody that is watching this? That's kind of on the fence about, you know, becoming Catholic or kind of, you know, researching and going into you know diving in to see if this is you know for them or if there's any truth in that what, what advice would you give that person i would say you know take your time and read don't always trust everybody's opinion because opinions do change you know open the catechism read the books have an open mind about it you know at that point you know you, th what do you have to lose this is this is life you know what i mean this is your life or death at this point this it's good to you know, really understand everything, you know, read, you know, what the backing up information of anything that you could figure out, understand what the rosary is really about. What do they use biblical comments or biblical scriptures? Do they not? Because I know as Protestants used to, you know, or my, me as a used to Protestant used to be able to base everything off the Bible. Everything was off the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's just, you just, Take your time, understand it, read about it, learn about it, watch videos about it. You know, all you can do is, you know, say yes or no. But, you know, I'd rather, you know, somebody, you know, have a logical, like, understanding about it mm -hmm. than just be like, oh, well, I heard they, uh, they're they idolaters or they worship Mary. So, you know, I'm, that's it for me. It's better to understand. So, yeah, that's there my you life. Know. Absolutely. Yes. So, yes. <laughs> Um, thank you for obviously being here and, and, and you know, sharing your story and, and cause it's, it truly is a, a beautiful one. You know, obviously I know your family, I know, um, you know, how they feel, which is, yeah. I mean, share with me real quick, a little bit. How, how do they feel now that their daughter or sister, uh, you know, aunt, niece, whatever, you know, the relationship is, uh, for them to you is now a Catholic. What is that like with your family? Yeah. You know, at first they were a little reluctant, you know, cause my family is involved in churches and stuff. So, um. You know, at first they try to, you know, put their put their thoughts and opinions of uh, what they think, but it wasn't hard. You know, I think they respect the fact that you know I'm a woman and I'm married, and if this is what I believe in, and you know, sometimes, very few times, they'll try to say something, but but it's it's they've I think they've come to understand this is I'm not going anywhere. This mm -hmm. is where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I'll try to send them, like, books and things for them to read and try to, you know, pull them in. But, I like, I've learned, you know, I don't want to ever pressure anybody. Uh, I know this is all in God's will. I will pray for them. And, um, you know, just little by little, if they have questions, I'm here to help. I'm opening up. Um, I try to share what I can with them. Like, like, you know, my mom about uh, going to confession, how it's really, you know, changed my way of like, you know, m my outer appearance, my mouth, my just everything, you mm -hmm. know, how I treat others. And um, yeah, so yeah, they're, uh, it's not, it's not like it was at first. It, and even at first it was. They didn't disown you say, not at all. with you, you Catholic, get out of here. Not at all. No? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> gotcha. Speaking of books, sorry, I know I said last thing, but I, one more thing I, I do want to ask. Um, obviously, I know you read a lot of stuff, the Bible, the catechism. I know that you read a book and this book that you read had a lot to do with your conversion. Share this a little bit about that book that you read. Oh, the um, City in a City or, or what was it called? Double in the City of Angels? Yes, I believe so. Jesse Romero. Jesse Romero. Yes. Tell us about the book by Jesse Romero. And yes. uh, I'll go ahead and put it up here on the screen. There it is. So now <laughs> that we can, uh, uh, yeah, explain to us. Yeah, the book, please. Yeah, so that uh, was another thing that really kind of sold me into Catholicism because it just, he started talking about, you know, some experiences that he's seen. Um, just people, just the demonic, uh, 
you know, presence, uh, obsession, oppression that was in people um, throughout his service as I believe he was a police officer. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it was just it, in the sea, the power of conversion and the stories that he told it just it what what really triggered me is the fact that the devil is real. He's he's real. And a lot of people will see that, you know, people there's some people that will see a person um, oppressed or um, possessed. Mm -hmm. You know, you can physically see it. You mm -hmm. see, you know, phenomenons happen in households, objects flying across. Mm -hmm. This is all demonic. And to be able to know that that you can physically see, and you know, we don't yeah. get to see Jesus, you know, obviously we get to see miracles, but you know, there are some people that will, you know, have visions or have that chance, but it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, it's far and few in between where as if you hear a lot of Satan and demonic activity happening. Mm -hmm. And so it really, it was, it was, I really got into that is because that the devil in the city of angels and the um, diary of American exorcist uh, by father Rosetti Rosetti. Yeah. Yes. And that's going to go on the screen right now. Yes. Get this book. It's a good book. Yes, yeah. it was. It's an awesome book. I absolutely enjoyed loving it. I'm actually sending it to my mom, my oh, Protestant mom. Yeah. <laughs> it's been asking to read it. Waiting. Right, that exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, to hear the exorcisms and, and you know the devil in the city of angels, that it's the it's the how they use the Catholic prayers. They use you know the rosary. They they use Our Lady. They use the Saint Michael the Archangel. It is Our Father. Do holy water. Mm. They pull out the rosaries yes, and they see yes, these devils yes. just burning up in these people, and they and eventually eventually they leave them yeah and to be able to know that it was the catholic priest mm -hmm. that used what we're learning in a catholic church that made those devils leave it, it was just it was eye-opening to me and not only that is like when satanists they hold a catholic or they hold a mass a satanic mass, Black mass they don't yeah. replicate a protestant sermon they don't replicate methodist or orthodox or anything they replicate and try to demonize a satanic or a mass by a satanic mass yeah the catholic church is the church that jesus christ started so yeah that's who he exactly. attacks yeah exactly absolutely. exactly so that was definitely eye-opening to me that it just stood out to me because like i said you know the devil is very apparent we all know that we see say you know demonic features and whatnot and to know like the Catholic is the Catholic church is fighting that and doing the exorcism and the devils are fleeing because of what our prayers and, you know, what we use in the holy waters and what we as Catholics believe are, um, holy or, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just lost my mind, but, um, us Catholics like that is, that's working. So when the devil understands that that's what's working, the church that started 2000 plus years ago, mm -hmm. you know, that made me really realize like, wow, this is real. Mm -hmm. This is true. Like spirit, you know, to Satan against God, it's real. Yeah, absolutely. Good thing that we're on the wedding side and we already know who, already know who wins at the end of the day. You know? Absolutely. Jesus uh, and God and Our Lady and all the, all the saints, absolutely. Um, you Amen. know, the demon, demons flee. So, yeah, the battle's already won. Jesus Amen. Christ already conquered Satan. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yes. Well, Trinity, thank you for your time here this evening and sharing your beautiful, wonderful story. And um, I will want to end with this is that now remember the most important weapon you can take in a battle is the most holy rosary. God bless, Godspeed, and simplify. <laughs>